So hello everybody, Driven by Moss 22.2 is out and it brings a lot of new features for the Ableton Push series, Push 1, 2 and 3. There are some specifics for Push 3, but most of the new features are available on all versions of the Push. So first big change was already in a previous version of Driven by Moss and this affects Push 2 and 3. You see the layout changed quite a bit. We have now enlarged the upper part here with a fader and we have now also if we enter here the session view you see that the track names are also visible if you show here your scenes and clips which is pretty helpful to see where you are working in the session view. Something new here in this new Driven by Moss version is if you switch between now the play mode and the session view, the mode stays open at the last selected mode. So you can also see your scenes and clip names when you are in a play view. This was a wish of a lot of users. And on the push three here, you can quickly switch between the views here with that button here on the right so you can enable here the scenes as well as switch to the marker mode and also the marker mode can be kept open if you go to other views here to play something so for example you could jump to a positioning project and still keep playing down here on the pads and on the push two there is or push one there is no such button here up here but here you can still press again the session knob and here you can have your settings which slightly change here a bit to off instead of mixer. So you can show here the markers and scenes enabled here from that view. Then have it also present in the other views. Another feature several people wished for is you normally have this hierarchical navigation that if you press or select a folder you can enter this folder and then only see the tracks in that folder and here's now an alternative option which you can configure in the settings if we go to the setting to the controller to the push controller you will see in workflow there is here a new option track navigation you can set it now to flat and you can also enable to include the master track in this view so you go here to the master track with that but, but you can now also select to have the master track in here which has the advantage that you can now access the clips on the master track which was not possible before so let's have a look at that. If I create some clips on the master track, for example, to change the tempo, you could now also start these master track clips. And this flat view works like this. You see now all the tracks you have in your project and you see only the content of a folder if you open that and it works like this. You select the track and then if you click it again it opens the folder and here you see now all the tracks in that folder you could also open the other folders since there are also some squirks with starting scenes if you have the nested folders this is also something which might nice worker for the time being if you have this flat view. So looking at sequences, there are some changes here. If I go here to the sequencer, you can long press to edit the note. This is still working, but now you can also unselect the note by long pressing it again, and then edit mode will close automatically. And you can still use the select button to select multiple notes for editing as well. There's also some other option for editing. Let's maybe unselect these and you can switch the clip view here. If you press it again, go to this view, which is also on a push two, but on the push three, you can now use here the encoder to select a note. And then if you press it, you are here in the option menu to edit this note. But the big new feature for this new Driven by Moss version is that we have a new sequencer which is mainly intended for drums and it's highly inspired by the Roland XOX machines which have such a specific sequencer and for that let's go to a drum machine 
And there I already selected here the drum XOX, which is new here. I also moved the drum sequences a bit to the right, so you can see these are intended for drums and these are intended for normal note sequences. So let's have a look at that. How does that work? This had a first on the Akai Fire and the Akai Fire has 16 rows, which we don't have here, so I flip this around that we have now for the clips these first two rows. So the first two rows represent the first 16 clips on the track. So you see here we have here two blue ones. So these are these two clips and you can do the normal things with clips. You can start them. You can also use the alternative start with shift and go back to that one. This is also working and you can also use the select one to only select it for editing. You have another feature, you can also duplicate clips here. So to do so, you can keep the duplicate button pressed here, select your source clip and then select the destination. And then you have quickly created a copy of that. You can also delete clips again. If you use the delete button, keep it pressed, select the pad, and then that clip is gone. So the advantage of that mode is that you have access to the clips as well as the different notes for playing. So the next two rows are for playing. You have the 16 drum pads from your drum machine. So let's switch to the drum machine. So you have here 12 slots filled. So we see here the 12 first drum pads. And for drum pads, you also have the usual features. So you can solo and mute them. If you keep the solo button pressed, solo, for example, the bass drum you can also solo multiple ones and back to that. You can also use mute. You can also slide nicely here. And back to that. And you can also use here, I forgot that you can also use a stop clip for the stopping the clip. And then the lower parts contains the actual sequence. So for example, let's have a look here at the bass drum. Maybe let's play the clip again. And let's solo the bass drum. So we can focus on that. And here you have the normal option to enable the steps. You see only the upper part is playing because we only have one bar playing, but you can change that by keeping here the fixed length button pressed. So you see now the length and there you can tap that one to get here two bars. You can also switch pages to create longer loops or you can put it insanely short or back to the normal length. And if you release it, you're back to the editing. You can also create a longer notes by keeping the first one pressed and touch another one, so it created, doesn't make much sense with the bass drum here, but you can also create longer notes. What you can also do is copy instrument steps. So for example, I could now copy this bit meaningless <laughs> pattern. Maybe let's go to the hi-hat. You see we have here this hi-hat, not very interesting pattern. Maybe let's create some holes in there. And by the way, you can also do ratcheting by pressing shift, you can increase the note repeat and you can go down again by keeping shift and select. You can reduce that again and you can copy this funny pattern now to another pad by keeping duplicate pressed again like we did with clips. So select the hi-hat and then select, I don't know what it is, maybe that one. Another bass drum, pretty wild. The only sad thing is that the undo works only for individual notes. So if you want to undo that, you need to press that multiple times to get rid of these notes again. And you can also change the resolution you have down here. So back here, the bass drum, this is in 16th, but you could also go here to, to 16th triplets or 
32 nodes even or have all the resolutions available like in the other sequences. I already mentioned that you can switch pages. Yeah, and that's about it. <laughs> Very powerful new sequencer. I hope you like it. Dig it and make some funky music.